Stereotype or not, these are the 10 foods Germans can't live without. Hey, I'm Jen, and I'm from Guatemala. And I'm Yvonne, and I'm German. And together, we're from SimpleGermany.com, where we help expats settle into life in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. So this is a very personal list, I would say, because uh, this is based on my own observations by living with a German. If you don't know, she is my wife, and we live together, of course. <laughs> uh, by observing German friends, or even by observing the culture on the streets regarding street food and whatnot, right? So this is our top 10 list. Let us know if you are a German and you can live with any, without any of these 10 things, or if we missed one that and is super have, popular. Exactly, you have another food that you cannot live without, we don't mention. Yeah, let us know in the comments below, please. So food number one, it is Fleisch Salat, or as Ivan would say, any kind of salat that is not a normal salad. <laughs> Any kind of salad that you don't, I, we, we have a picture when you think of a salad like this green, healthy, mm. uh, leafy thing. And uh, when we mean flash salad and any kind of salad, it's anything that is mixed with mayonnaise and it's called a salad. So first of all, let's clarify what is flash salad. Literally translated, it is flesh salad. No, <laughs> flesh is meat. Ah, meat salad. Yeah, Sorry, exactly. I thought it was flesh. <laughs> Flesh salad is a meat salad, and it's usually um, like like pork um, meat, uh, like like ham, uh, cut up in little stripes, mixed with like pickles um, and and and, and tons other of mayo. other things, and tons of mayonnaise, and it just has this creamy, delicious, mm, f- ah, and um, yeah, there are breakfasts where we fight for the flesh salad. Yeah, I mean we but, not Jen and I, uh, but like other like my family, we don't fight, but it's more like. Usually when you want to grab something for breakfast and you say, ah, it's for this, it's next to this person because you know that this person also loves flesh salad. <laughs> so Ivan loves flesh salad so much that every time we go visit her parents, there's a one metzgerei that, love, that does your favorite flesh salad. Exactly. There's always like a little bowl of flesh salad. Um, and we have breakfast there maybe two times, Saturday and Sunday, and by the end of Sunday, it's empty. Yeah. But anyways, other kinds of salads include also kartoffel salad. Herring it? salad. Herring, which is a kind of fish. Yeah. I would also argue this as shrimp cocktail. Yeah, um, but that doesn't have the name salad in it. It should have salad because I like that one, actually. That one's very delicious. It's also very mayo, creamy <laughs> heaviness. It's very nice. Anyways, thing number two, it is butter or butter. Butter, yep. <laughs> So even the amount of choices that you have in the supermarket for butter, I don't know if this is normal in every country, uh, but here it's just like overwhelming. Which one do you even like buy? Because there's also butter with salt, without salt, uh, margarine. But out of those, you have like a gazillion options. Um, can you, you can live without butter. I live fully without butter. I don't use butter like ever. Oh, okay, but the we, only time we eat butter is with the asparagus. Ah, true. There, we absolutely yes. need butter to have that. Um, however, observing other friends and family members in breakfast, also there has to be butter because butter. Some Germans like to put that butter on the bread as a Sorry. first layer. Brotchen. That's the first layer before they. Oh, you can do better than that. Oh my God, Brotchen. No, no. Brotchen. Brotchen. <laughs> Where's the <laughs> uh? Brotchen. Uh. Brotchen. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. We're gonna cut that out, obviously, right? So, <laughs> no. Third on our list is Schorle. So, we're not saying Apfelschorle, but any kind of Schorle. What is Schorle? So, Apfelschorle, I would say, is the, the most popular and uh, I would say the, the kind of what the trendsetter with, with what it started. <laughs> uh, Apfelschorle is apple, apple spritzer, uh, apple juice mixed with uh, sparkling water. Ah. And nowadays, you mix sparkling water with any fruit juice. That could be Rhabarber Schorle, Maracuja Schorle, Orange Saft Schorle. That is not so popular. Huh. Maybe yeah. we should try it. I it's think more it's like a mimosa. Nice. It's more like or- orange juice with like Zeck. Oh, okay. Yeah, Zekt is sparkling wine. Yeah. yeah, okay. But yes, any scholle. So we know we've talked about Apfelschorle in a different video and we had tons of comments that not from you Germans, beautiful people, that you don't like Apfelschorle and you don't drink that. So now we ask again, can you live without Schorle, any oh, type of Schorle? That is a good question. Let us know in the comments below. So now we jump to point number four and this is Currywurst. So what is Currywurst, as I would call it in English. So I would say currywurst is a specification of the bratwurst in general. Uh-huh. Um, but we may name currywurst just because we have a statistic here that we would like to share later on. Uh, bratwurst is, I mean, uh, German bratwurst, right? It's a, it's a sausage that is grilled. It can be long. <clears throat> Sorry. Well, the sausage... <laughs> The sausage can be long, it can be small if you're like in the Nuremberg region. Um, different different meats, also different tastes, but it's pretty much any grilled sausage. Um, usually we would refer to it like from a 
imbus like from like not from a, a restaurant or you would do at home i rarely do it but like a barbecue hmm. imbus food truck kind of thing yeah and the curry wurst is that kind of thing that sausage um cut into small pieces already and then of course topped with the delicious curry sauce which makes or breaks the currywurst ah, like the secret is in the sauce. the sauce okay i personally have tried currywurst multiple times and throughout the years i like it less and less to be honest um i don't know it's just not a thing but i love bratwurst i would also argue that bratwurst sometimes has been a disappointment because you really get a very big sausage with sometimes this much bread that you can hold it really which is another experience that it's yeah so but you want to eat the meat not the bread in this case no, but maybe it's, not, the yummy it's not a hot dog right that's the difference it's not of a, course not it's That's a German I mean. bratwurst. There you go. Yeah, yeah, you go. Anyway, so did you know, though, that until 2020, the currywurst was for 25 years in a row. 28. Right? Oh, 28 years in a row. The number one, number, number one, one. Um, <laughs> favorite and most eaten canteen food. So cafeteria food in like German companies and Mensas in the university and what any Canteen and cafeteria for 28 years in a row, wow. the favorite food of the German canteen. Oh, what? wow. And then what happened? What happened? So what, what is now the favorite? Because it's until 2020, right? Yeah. So then um, the, it has been overtaken by spaghetti bolognese. So, <laughs> Bologna spaghetti. Oh, wow. That is crazy. So it's a very big thing. Yeah. It's a very so big so I would argue based on that statistics that most Germans cannot live without currywurst. Currywurst. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. If you've enjoyed this content so far, then please hit that like button and that subscribe button if you haven't yet. That is the easiest way that you can support Simple Germany. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can always buy us a coffee at coffee.com slash Simple Germany. Let's continue with the content. Number five on the list is sauerkraut or sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Okay, so big disclaimer here. I'm the number one German that can live without sauerkraut. Yes, I also don't like sauerkraut, to be honest. I think we've tried... I think a friend did it for us once and it was it was actually okay. It was yummy, yeah. It was yummy. But uh, generally speaking, I think I've tried sauerkraut that one time. That was the only time. Maybe twice when I tried it and then I'm like, oh, I don't really like this. So what is sauerkraut? Uh, sauerkraut is fermented cabbage, pretty much. Um, and it's part of the very traditional German cuisine, right? That um, I'm not a fan of in general. So <laughs> there goes my, I can't live without it. But yesterday I was at the Metzger. Yeah. And of course I had... Butcher uh, shop. In a butcher shop, exactly. And I had a... Uh, um, yeah, a person in front of me um, order sauerkraut. So you can order also buy like pre prepared sauerkraut at the butcher yeah. actually so that is something that i learned there because i actually didn't know and uh tr smooth transition to number six because of course uh, we germans don't stop at sauerkraut when it comes to cabbage no there is a whole variety of cabbage which <laughs> is number six and uh jen do you remember the cabbages let's see rotkohl mm -hmm. grunkohl mm -hmm. rosenkohl lila kohl orange kohl i'm kidding that is, i'm yeah. just adding more colors because <laughs> everything seems to be kohl related right and it has like a color be before it <laughs> that is so not true Rosenkohl is not a color. Yeah. Isn't it rosa a color? A color? A color? Oh, <laughs> rosé? It's, like, it's more like rose cabbage. Ah, well, it could be a rose yeah, color. A rose tattoo. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, then there's Wirsing. Yeah, that's oh. also no color. Another type of cabbage. Huh. The point is Germans love cabbage. In general, yeah. In general, again, I don't, so I can live without it. But please let us know, Um, actually, do you eat cabbage every week? Ah, that is interesting. Yeah, we don't we don't eat cabbage at all. For some Christmas dinners that we've been with friends, someone prepares some kind of kohl, and we've been open and trying it, and actually it's not that yeah, bad. Yeah, it's yummy. However, but... we just don't have it in our day-to-day -day yeah. life, yeah. But I've seen other friends, and they can't live with any kind of kohl, really. It's, it's really crazy, yeah. Okay, number seven on our list, and it is beer. Beer, beer. Okay, we know not every German loves beer. We do understand that. We we also have friends who don't like beer. Uh, but generally speaking, the amount of consumption of beer is pretty high. To the extent that, did you know that there is more than 1,500 breweries in Germany? And this does not include anything with craft beer. This is purely breweries that follow the... Reinheitsgebot. <laughs> exactly. Which we actually go into detail in the video on uh, the German beer culture because, I mean, let's face it, we are a beer nation, um, mm. whether you know you particularly like it or not um but that is just a fact and we consume a lot of it yes and also we personally consume a lot of beer at home yes so we always have like a crate of beer um that we drink slowly but we still drink it there's always beer at home i would say yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 number eight it is the famous let's see if i can pronounce this right with the umlaut <laughs> döner ah, ah! 
Ja, 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 oh, ja, ja. Döner. Jawohl, der Döner Kebab. Yes. Döner Kebab. Which I would say it's um, obviously not German origin. Right? It was uh, brought to uh, no, Germany. No, it is German origin. No, but it's, Turkish. it's by a Turkish person. But it was in Berlin. Because he, uh, I went, because this is what I, I, I learned. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. But we went to this specific restaurant or Döner Kebab place in Berlin because the story goes that um, this Turkish man, he uh, prepared, usually donuts are prepared on a teller, on a plate. Um, but there were tons of workers that would go fast and they wouldn't have enough time to eat from the plate. So he thought, hmm, what if I put everything in one of these falafel things or like these uh, bread thingies? Fladenbrot. Fladenbrot, genau. Brot. Brot, genau. Um, and so he tried that and that's how the first donut was made. So it was created in Berlin, not by a German, but it was still the origin is from Germany. There you go. All right. There did you go. know? That's the story I heard. And this is the <laughs> restaurant that we went to who apparently did this. If you have a different story, please let me know because correct me if I'm wrong. I would, yeah. like, I would be interested. Right. Yeah. So the döner is definitely one of, if not the most popular German street foods. Oh my God, it's so delicious. And it is very yummy. Yes. And there's, I mean, there's plenty of, of people that travel to Germany and say, I cannot travel to Germany without having a <laughs> döner, right? It is expressed best by the sheer amount of points of sales where you can buy a döner, like a döner imbus. I have the statistics here. It is 16,000 Döner Buden, or places to buy uh, Döner Kebabs. And it's one Döner Imbiss per 5,000 inhabitants. If you if you take 16,000 and then 82 million people, wow. um, 82 million including like the, the, the babies, the children that don't really <laughs> eat Döner, for each 5,000 people living in Germany, There's one you, place. you find one place for sale. Like now yes. imagine how many people live in your city, how many Döner Imbiss you have. I think that's pretty impressive. That is pretty impressive. It's so if you haven't tried this, if you eat meat and you haven't tried them, it's really good. Before there was a place here in Dusseldorf where you could actually have a vegan Döner. I was going to say, you can also have It was have only a... like vegetables and very. it was very delicious. Yeah. For some reason, they closed down. I don't know. I I'm pretty them. sure you can go to any Imbiss bud and just say everything but meat. Yeah. Uh, but however, it also depends how the sauce is made, right? So True. it's not just as simple as vegetarian. Yes, yes, there you go. You know, trying to be inclusive here. Anyways, let's jump to point number nine on our list. And this is anything in the world of Wurst. Wurst. So this is like sausage. And meat. And meat. Like okay. anything in the, in, the, in, the, in the meaty area. Um, so if we say there's 16,000 places in Germany where you can buy a donut, for meat, there's actually 19,000 places where you can buy meat. So like a Metzka, right? So this is equal to like one point of sale to buy sausage and meat per 4,300 inhabitants. That means that every relatively small village has their own butcher or hmm. a butcher counter in a supermarket. So here we talk about the fresh points of sale, right? Either a single-handed butcher or yeah. like we discussed uh, in our grocery shopping video um, for Germany, the uh, fresh meat counters in supermarkets. Yes, that is crazy. Germany is a meat-loving country. Yes, and I would argue, uh, unless you're a vegan or vegetarian, in every German breakfast, there's some sort of meat always. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. which I prefer just like the... The cooked one, because there's like this Blutwurst and other, uh, which I personally don't like. Teewurst. Uh, Teewurst, which I don't like. Leberwurst. Love, yeah. <laughs> we can do a whole video of all the Wurst. <laughs> so I generally don't like um, any kind of this Wurst that is for breakfast, unless it's like cooked. How do you say this? Like processed or cooked hard? Because all these Teewurst and Blutwurst you are want like it warm. soft. No, they're like soft. They're like, you know, you cut them and then... Mm. They're pâtés. Yeah, they're kind of patents. I yeah, don't, I yeah. don't like them. Yeah. So the question here is, uh, I mean, I know uh, we've also observed it that obviously the trend for less meat is also happening in Germany. Yes. Um, but regardless of that, of you Germans and non-Germans, uh, how much meat, how many meat lovers, how much meat do you eat? <laughs> <laughs> Are you part of those Germans that can live without it or do you really have to, to have, have the meat, meat for yeah. breakfast or any kind of other food? Oh, any kind of other yeah. food, yeah. And of course, number 10, and we kind of like ordered these based on how popular they are. So this is the most popular. Can you guess what it is? The one thing, and this I would be brave enough to say that there is no German that cannot live without this. Oh my God, Ooh. this is very specific. Let's say maybe like 95%. <laughs> bread. German bread. Tell me if this is true or not. Are you a German that doesn't eat bread? Oh, that would be so interesting. I'm pretty sure there is there are Germans that don't eat bread, right? Uh, but just by the sheer amount of like bread. No, this is crazy. So there are 45,000 points of sales for bakeries. What does for it mean? For buying bread. So that is one bakery or bakers 
or baker shop per 1,000 800 inhabitants 1800 our neighborhood has more people than that and yeah. and i mean believe it or not we i have can count on my hands there are already five bakeries <laughs> within two minute walking distance from our house that is so crazy. i would argue i agree the number one food germans can't live without and also by the sheer amount of popularity abroad hmm. where you can buy german bread from specific shops is is the the bread per se and the protein also yeah and speaking of german bread that is actually the perfect transition into liquid bread, <laughs> a.k.a. German beer. beer, for the next video for you to watch where we talk about German beer culture. Until next time. Cheers! Cheers.